Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I have always had this fascination with the diagnostic equipment that old-timey computer repair guys, and when I say old-timey, I mean back in the 80s, would bring to your office or to your house. I mean, these guys would show up and you would get the heck out of the way because this person had a big old tool bag and they knew what they were doing and they had access to things that you just didn't have access to. And they would pull out some diagnostic card and plug it in and uh, there'd be LEDs and maybe like a little display like this. They would give them codes and they would look it up in a book and they'd start probing things and checking voltages and all that kind of stuff, and you got the sense that there was something special going on that you just didn't have access to. You needed that technician. One of the coolest things that I never had access to in my own hands was these things that they used to use on some of the 8-bit computers and even some of the 16-bit computers called diagnostic cartridges. And so for things like the Commodore 64 or the Atari 8-bit computers, they had special cartridges that would plug in the cartridge slot and sometimes they would hook a harness up to all the ports and stuff like that and they'd fire it up and it would have some kind of program that you've never seen before and it would give you access to all the RAM and, you know, screen color tests and stuff like that and they just had this awesome resource that we couldn't get our hands on because we weren't that special. But thanks to PCBWay.com, we are that special. I went online and they had a shared project to make what they call the Super Salt diagnostic cartridge for the Atari 8-bit computer. Now this could actually be just a game cartridge if you wanted to, but it's designed to be a diagnostic cartridge for diagnosing these old computers. And I could not pass up the chance to get my hands on a couple of these. So I went on PCBWay.com, checked out their shared project, and there's a guy named C64 Istanbul. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and give him a shout out. He is a rock star over at PCBWay.com and he designs so much cool stuff. And I had the opportunity to talk to him and he's just the nicest human being on the face of the earth. And he designs this stuff and gives it away and gets a little commission from PCBWay.com and then orders his own stuff with that commission. And so I am just a giant fan of this guy and his designs. And he built this thing called the Super Salt Diagnostic Cartridge, which was a real thing back in the day. So what I need to do to build this bad boy is actually pretty simple. I need to solder a couple of sockets on here in case I ever want to take the chips out. And uh, I'm going to put in a 74LS00 logic chip. And I'm going to put an EEPROM on here that I'm going to burn. I'm just going to use a simple 8K EEPROM. They're cheap and easy to come by. And I'm going to put a little 100 nanofarad, which I believe is a 104 uh, little ceramic disc capacitor. And then we're going to fire this thing up. And then I will have uh, not only one, but I'm going to have multiple diagnostic cartridges for the various computers. And so, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and start building one of these things and we'll see what we can come up with. All right, well, there you have it. Um, now that we have the board assembled, we need to populate these chips. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a 74LS00 uh, chip and we're gonna get a 64 EEPROM and uh, start programming. But one of the things is before I actually put this 74 series chip in there, I'm going to test it. And so uh, as you can see here, I've got a whole box of logic chips, a little bit hard to see, but they're um, organized by series of so these are the 4000 ones and then come back here and I've got my 7400 series so I'm going to grab that out and I'm going to get out a couple of those chips and I'm going to pop them in my EEPROM programmer and it has a very cool feature for testing these chips. Uh, there's no reason to waste time trying to diagnose your diagnostics if you can diagnose it before you populate it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and test these chips before I ever put them in the board. So I'll admit when I first bought this EEPROM programmer, it's one of those things I wasn't sure that I was definitely going to use. But now that I have it, I wonder how I ever lived without it. Um, I'm going to go to device and logic test and uh, I'm going to come down here to the 74, I'll type in 7400 
I'm going to click that and I'm going to hit test and I'm going to find out right away that this one failed. And let's try another one. And there we go. Now I could have inserted that chip into a board and wondered why things weren't working and started checking soldering joints and all that kind of stuff just for the fact that the chip came from AliExpress and it didn't work. So uh, definitely worth going through and I'm going to test every one of these chips before I put them in the board and then we'll talk about programming the thing. So we're going to head over to PCBWay.com and check out their shared projects. And this is C64 Istanbul's page. He's a legend. Um, and he does mention again that this can be used not only as a super salt diagnostic cartridge, but can really be used for any uh, cartridge for an 8-bit computer. So we're going to come here and we're going to grab these ROMs from archive.org and we'll look at programming the thing. So once you download the ROMs, there's a lot of different versions of them and uh, you can make one or all of them. Uh, I'm going to just show you this. So this is the, I think the latest one in here. This is the uh, 2.07 and uh, there's a lot more stuff inside this folder. So if you click this, you'll see that there is this giant PDF, like 68 pages or something like that, of information about the SuperSalt project and so you can come in here and i mean they're going to give you all kinds of diagnostic information and there's some diagrams and things like that but all kinds of things that you can use for diagnosing your ataris and that's all included with the rom set now as i mentioned there's a lot of different versions for a lot of different machines and uh, i'm going to get most of them and actually put them into boards so again back here you have the latest version the 2.07 generic but then inside of here there is uh some ones that are specific for specific machines so this is the original one for the atari 400 and the 800 and the way this works is you need to burn a rom image that's essentially full so the rom itself takes up 8k but um you could have an 8k eprom a 16k eprom a 32k or 64k eprom and so what they basically do is for convenience they duplicate this so in other words this is just the straight up rom image and then this is the rom image in one file twice four times and eight times and that just stops you from having to do that on your own so uh this is the version 1.0 for the 400 and the 800 and then as you come down here there's other ones this one is for the uh, atari xe systems and so you grab the rom that meets the size of your chip and the system that you're using so in my case i've gone into the eprom software and let's just go ahead and grab the latest one first so we're going to make a 2.7 version and we're going to hit ok so the next step is to choose the actual um, eprom that you're using so i'm going to click this button and I'm going to go and just search 28C64. And uh, the one I have is an Atmel brand. And the one I have is actually a dip socket. So uh, we're going to hit a B at the end there to eliminate some. And so we have the 28C64B. And I have it in the dip 28 package. So I'm going to hit select. And then uh, I actually should have loaded the ROM before after that so i'm going to go ahead and load this one more time and now that i have my rom loaded and my chip selected i'm going to go ahead and program it easy peasy lemon squeezy So this is my Atari XEGS, and as you can tell by the stickers and stuff like that, I haven't done anything with this yet. I've plugged it in, I've played around with it a little bit. Um, I will say, I think the video, as you'll see soon, uh, looks a little crappy. Like I feel like there's some lines and stuff in there that I don't know if that's normal. So if you have one of these machines, please let me know if that's normal or if that's something I need to dig into. And even better, if you have a fix for it, let me know. Um, but this is a machine that people either seem to love or hate the aesthetic. I kind of like it. I like these little pastel buttons. They're very late 80s, uh, very cool kind of Miami Vice-ish type things. Um, and so anyway, I've got the cartridge plugged in now. I already have the machine on because my video doesn't like to sync. Uh, my video capture doesn't like to sync when I first turn the machine on. So I have to fiddle with cables and stuff. So it's on. So what you have to do is hit the select button to choose the test that you want to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the audio test. Now, I can't hear that here because it's into the capture system, but I think right now some audio tones are playing in your speakers and uh, you can let me know if that happened or not. 
Uh, you can hit the space bar to finish it and uh, we'll do another select and we'll do a video test. Now, um, as you can see, there are little lines as the in the gradients and um, again, I don't know if that's normal and the colors overall just seem very Miami Vice-ish to me. Uh, they sort of match the color palette that you have on here and I also don't know if that little black or the big black bar is supposed to be there in the middle. Um, so again, we'll figure that out over time. Um, hit the space bar and I'll come down here. Now I can't test the ports. Um, you can make a harness for this thing that would test all the ports. I haven't done that yet. If there's a lot of interest in it, maybe I'll do it, but uh, it seems like a lot of work for right now considering my ports work. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit select and we'll do a keyboard test. I'm gonna <laughs> My cat decided to uh, bring a toy up above my workbench right now if you hear some thumping around. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a keyboard test and it's kind of weird. It tells you to um, press just certain keys. So they say if you press the escape key and then I'll bring this up here, uh, Q, S, C, you can see that they are um, fading out. I would have expected to press the space bar, but I'm guessing they figured out that uh, you know, you're getting the whole matrix if you do this. So I nine, and then uh, you come down here, I'm gonna hit the break key. And then they want you to hit the start key, the select key and the option key and the thing passed. Uh, and we'll go ahead, come down here, do a ROM test. This one's real quick, it goes right through, tells me that the ROM is fine. And uh, we will do a RAM test, which I believe this one takes a little bit longer, uh, maybe 30 seconds to complete the RAM test. And when it's done, it'll give you a pass or fail and there you have it all right so i thought it'd be kind of dumb of me to make these things and at least not try a game so i found a game called fast eddie fit on the cartridge uh just fine and so in addition to the little diagnostic rom i made a game rom and uh so i popped the thing in the system and uh yeah we'll see what happens Now, I am not much of a gamer, and it's been a while since I've played any of these style of games, and I have no idea what you're supposed to do, but we're going to go ahead and hit the button, and, uh, yeah, we'll go up. Yeah, I want that heart. Okay, we got that. I have no idea what you're... Oh, gosh. I have no idea what you're supposed to do here. Um, okay. I mean, it looks like a simple Donkey Kong game, but what happens... Oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't really know what happens when you get to the top. Um, probably should have read some instructions. I got a little heart there. Oh gosh. Yeah, how what are you supposed to do with that guy? How do you kill him? The tall mushroom looking guy. I don't know, but the fact is you can make a game with this thing and I think that's pretty cool. Well, there you have it. That is the Super Salt Diagnostic cartridge. I've been playing around with some different designs uh for 3D printing uh, cartridge cases for these things. Most of them are made so that you can stick the thing out the top and kind of see um, the name and stuff like that, which is kind of cool, kind of weird. I do like that on this one, you know, you're seeing down here that which side this thing goes in and it's definitely possible to plug it in the wrong way. So I'm not even sure that I'm gonna keep these things in enclosures. But uh, anyway, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this project and thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.